Hi guys, I'm Jacob and this is the Prepper's Bunker Outdoors. Today I'm going to talk to you about two insane knives, the Dark Timber Kodiak and the Dark Timber OG Grizzly. We're going to talk about how they compare each other, but first, let's do my intro. Just kidding, I'm in between video editing softwares right now. I haven't made an intro, so just imagine that like the channel squirrel like takes a knife, cuts the screen, whoosh, intro to me. All right, as you might know, I do not advertise on this channel. This channel is funded uh, exclusively through sales at beachandtactical.com, which is my website and products that I produce or market or design or whatever. Also, new to the channel, I am a grunt style brand ambassador, so you can use my link to purchase awesome grunt style gear and you can use my coupon code to get 10% off. That link will be in the description box below. And also, I am now doing Patreon, so you can directly and personally help fund this channel. So, all of those links will be in the description box below. Now let's get right into it. All right guys, the knife in front here is the Dark Timber OG Grizzly. It has an eight inch blade. It's a quarter inch thick and it's 18.7 ounces. That's one pound and 2.7 ounces. The blade in the back here is the Dark Timber Kodiak. It's got an 11 inch blade, 3 sixteenths of an inch thick at the spine and it comes in at exactly 16 ounces, one pound. Now, these knives are not really direct competitors. They're actually made for very different things. So we're not going to control variables while chopping and do a bunch of other stuff to show exact performance because they're both made for different things. That's not a, not really a fair test. Instead what we're going to do is simply talk about their performance and what I feel they were designed and intended to do. Okay guys, so I'm actually walking through a part of my property that I didn't even know that I had, which is really exciting because this little bit of land here has some cedars that are actually quite a good size. So I mentioned that these two knives are different. They have different purposes. If they didn't, if they were both simply say large chopper slash uh, one tool option, beast mode survival knives, uh, yeah, we would take them to the table of destruction and see on chopping how they both performed. But they're not. The Grizzly is considerably heavier and it has some traits to it that make it more of a three day last ditch, you could die absolute emergency survival knife Whereas the Kodiak is more of a multi-purpose universal tool. So what we're going to do to compare these two awesome blades is we're simply going to talk about them and show them one at a time. First, let's talk about the venerable Dark Timber Kodiak as it is the Elder model. The Dark Timber Kodiak. If you've got a problem, yo, it'll solve it. Essentially, the bushcraft and survival communities are very odd and finicky groups of people who are all looking for something very specific and think that anything else is crap. So, where does this knife fall into that? Well, there's a group of people who are looking to squeeze absolutely every ounce of performance possible out of every ounce of weight. That is where the Dark Timber Kodiak excels. It's only 16 ounces with an 11 inch long blade, even though it is 3 16 of an inch thick. This is made out of CPM 3V steel, which is probably the toughest well-balanced steel available on the market. This is a CPM powdered metal super steel. 
So uh, you've got a fairly thin edge. And for only being 16 ounces, you've got this length and reach for doing some good chopping. I don't think that there's any other knife at 16 ounces that's going to beat this knife in chopping. If you've got a baton anything, you've got a whole lot of length to do it. And the CPM 3V steel is tough enough to get the job done. And you've got a square spine for your ferro rod. You've got a nice choil for doing your fine work. And this knife will do fine work. I mean, just no question, no hesitation. Um, I don't know if you're looking to like carve an intricate spoon with like Viking runes on it, but if your idea of doing fine work is notches for traps and feather sticks and maybe skinning some game every once in a while, you're going to be able to get it done with the Kodiak. No question about it. Uh, very, It's a very special blade in that regard and I think it's the lightest uh, one tool option worthy blade that I've ever used. It's really an impressive piece of steel. The Kodiak's strength is in its versatility. The dark timber OG Grizzly is the opposite. The OG Grizzly's strengths are in its ability to do something very specific. It's, it's not chopping, it's not fine work, it's not uh, getting the most performance per ounce, it's being a brutal tank of a blade. Where performance wise the Kodiak is refined and almost like a uh, F1 Formula race car, the, uh, the Kodiak here is more like a dump truck except it's a dump truck designed, if need be, to baton through like cars and doors, aircraft holes, to, to fight, to resist. This is a completely different blade. I'm gonna have to talk about it a little bit longer than I talked about the Kodiak for that reason, so that you understand what I mean. The Kodiak does not chop as well as, I'm sorry, the OG Grizzly does not chop as well as the Kodiak. This blade is just much shorter and it's very thick. The weight distribution is just completely different. Um, not only that, in my opinion, the weight and weight distribution of this blade does not necessarily only come from the thickness of the spine, but the thickness of the edge. Now, my piece of junk camera is not necessarily probably going to show you that as well as I would like it to, but I have to talk about edge thickness for a second. There is one reason alone to make a thick edge on a knife, and look at that beefy tip too. I'm going to have to abuse that tip a bit to show you how tough it is. There's one reason to make a knife with a thick edge, and that is to make it stronger. There are three reasons that companies usually do that. Number one, because their metal choice is wrong, or they're not confident in their heat treat because they're rushing blades through, so they want to make an extra thick edge to ensure that it's not going to break and they don't have to pay for a warranty. Two because they've chose a poor grind for the knife, AKA they want to hollow grind it to make the whole production process go faster so they can save money, or three, because they want to make the toughest freaking knife they possibly can. So typically what you're gonna see is you're going to see an inadequate steel choice for the job at hand. So for instance, 1095 is a super, super tough steel, but if you want it to be the toughest steel like you want to baton through cars and bricks and crap you're gonna to have to give it a super fat thick edge right um, because that's not its strongest point on the flip side of it or d2 
D2s are very common steel for some reason today, but unless it's vacuum heat treated absolutely perfectly, it's incredibly brittle. Even if it is heat treated perfectly, it's still not the toughest steel. So if you want to use that steel in a hard use fixed blade knife, you give it a thick edge. Don't do that, by the way, because it's a, it's a band-aid. It's, it's, it's not the way to do things. Um, and, you know, often on the market, actually, you see D2 knives that are hollow ground with thick edges. It's like, the, it's like a home run of crap, or three strikes and they're out. It's just garbage. There are very, very few knives on the market today that should have a thick edge, and this is one of them. This is a knife that is in essentially the toughest super steel on the market that is a balanced steel, CPM 3V. The heat treat, I know that Peter Kohler is completely confident in, so they're not trying to avoid anything with that. You have basically one of the toughest knives on the planet with a thick edge. And what does that mean? That means that you literally have, come here, that boy. You literally have an absolutely tough, I didn't tell you to lick my face, tough knife. So I mentioned, okay, now you're being annoying, that these knives have different purposes. That is a versatile all use knife. This knife is not just like an everyday survival knife. This knife is like, I'm in an emergency situation where people are trying to kill me and I have to crush stuff, stab stuff, and I have to make it three days in a hostile environment before I can get the crap out of here. And I don't really care if I break my knife or not in the process. I don't care if I have to pry open a gun safe with this thing because this is a tool and if it doesn't work, I'm gonna die. That's what this knife is to the highest level. So it gives up some things. The th with the thick edge, uh, it's not gonna do fine work as well. It's not gonna chop as well. The weight distribution is much different. It's quite heavy for its size. It is a very specific knife. And yet, when chopping with this knife, you can get it done. Uh, I can strop this edge back. That's the other thing about thick edges. They're not as easy to sharpen but I feel I can maintain this one. Uh, I will do some skinning or at least some game prep with it. We'll see how that goes. I have no doubt I'll be able to get it done though. I won't be able to make it pretty, but I'll be able to get it done. And I can sure do some feather sticks with this knife. I can also do feather sticks with a seven pound hewing ax that's 200 years old that's chisel ground with my left hand. So it is what it is. Uh, but you've got the square spine. This, the proper definition for this blade is brutal. So there you have it. I am proud to own the OG Grizzly. The thing is a monster. If you are looking for a knife for bushcraft, or for survival outings, if you're looking to maximize work potential per ounce, the Kodiak is the way to go, guys. It just is. If you want a knife to throw in your bug out bag that might not perform quite as well, might be a little bit heavier, but is just absolutely to hell and back rugged, it's the dang, it's the dang OG Grizzly, guys. Um, like I said, it's just a more refined, it's a more specific goal, I believe. Uh, but it's, it's just, it's just freaking cool, is what it is. Um, bottom line, my, uh, when it comes, to Peter Kohler, Peter Kohler's mid-tech knives are expensive, guys. If you're watching this, you probably realize that. But when you look at what he's doing, they're not. If you look at premium Japanese mid-techs, if you look at if you look at production knives, 
that are the same size and the same steel from huge companies, they're the same price, if not more expensive. I am actually shocked that Peter can get his prices to what he gets them to. It is my hope that he can work through some of the logistics necessary to simply make more knives, not even make them cheaper. Um, if he can just make more, they will be worth every penny. He'll, as long as he can sell them, that's the thing. Now, as it stands, when Peter does a run of 100 knives or whatever, they sell out in like 45 seconds. So, Lord willing, he can keep selling and he can make more knives because dark timber, mid techs, dark timber or dark timber production knives are something that needs to exist, guys. These are, these are purpose built blades by someone who is a user and an artist, a dreamer, a freaking American. Like an American like they used to make them. And uh, I want nothing but to see him succeed. So anyways, guys. Uh, oh, I, I should have mentioned this earlier in the video. I'm carrying these knives around in a Hidden Woodsman French trade bag, which is legit. It's like literally the perfect size for taking like a sandwich, a drink, a sleeping bag, and a tarp out for an adventure or a hunting trip. Freaking fan freaking tastic. I need to find out where all the foxes and predators are coming from on my property. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, guys. You will be seeing these knives a bit more in the future, especially the OG Grizzly. The Kodiak is not mine, it was sent to me by a subscriber. Actually, this bag, I'm not sponsored by the Hidden Woodsman, guys. He makes awesome stuff, but this bag was provided to me by a subscriber as well. So, uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Make sure to check the links below. Check out Dark Timber Custom Knives. Lord willing, you can get your hands on one. I hope you appreciated the video and that you have a blessed day. Thank you for watching.